Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. Today I'm going to be looking at the new game from GMT, Skies Above Britain, designed by Jerry White and Gina Willis. This game uh, was just recently released. It's basically the third in a series uh, following uh, Skies Above the Reich and Storm Above the Reich, but this is uh, slum somewhat of a different animal than those first two games. Obviously there are significant differences between the uh, the Battle of Britain and the Blitz, as opposed to the uh, the daylight bombing raids of the 8th Air Force using uh, B-17s, B-24s, etc. that are covered in the first two games, only because of the, uh, you know, the various aircraft involved and the, the tactics involved and so on and so forth. So this game is uh, a little bit different. So if you're familiar with the first two uh, in the series that Jerry White designed, this one is different. One thing that it that this one does that I find uh, very useful and interesting is it takes a kind of a play, learn as you play, play as you learn kind of approach. I believe that's what it says in the in the rule book about how how they've laid this out. So essentially, here's our rule book. Now, as you can see, it's actually fairly it's fairly long. I mean, it goes out to sixty some pages here, uh, 62, 62 pages. So there's a there's a whole lot in here, but you can see it's broken up. Obviously, most rule books are broken up into sections. But the the nice thing about this is the game has various sequ sequences and cycles in it. And the way the game is set up for learning it is you learn how to do the dogfight cycle, then you learn how to do the bomber cycle, then you learn how to do the interception sequence and the raid vector sequence and all that stuff, and eventually. You get to the point where you can play the campaign, which allows you to play through the entire Battle of Britain and kind of manage your squadrons and do all the things that the RAF had to do when they were, you know, basically engaged in a fight for their very lives, essentially. So the nice thing is in the way that you learn this in, in chunks, basically. So you start with dogfights. It's very straightforward, and it's only the dogfight piece. Then you would learn the bomber cycle and how you deal with that and so on and so forth through the game. So what I'm going to do here with the videos is I'll do a video here, and that's, that's what this one is. We're going to start with the dogfight cycle. Now I'll talk about this a little bit, uh, the introduction and the formations, because that's kind of the core and the base of the game, and everything that you build upon. But um, we'll go through the, the campaign book, which is this guy right here, the scenario or situation manual, I guess. But you can see... You have your introduction, which is very short. Then you have the dogfight scenarios for the dogfight cycle, the bomber scenarios for the bomber cycle, intercept, patrol example, and then the campaign. The campaign is divided into four chapters. I think each chapter has six scenarios in it. So everything is laid out in a very, very interesting and progressive manner. Makes the game a lot easier to learn. Here we have our sequence of play in general. You can see the various sequences on it. We're going to be starting with this one right here, the dogfight cycle. And you can see it's really simple. First, you determine the, the attitude of the, of the battle. So it can be head-on, where you're actually obviously flying at each other. Then you can have tailed, where you know you have one and the, the other one's behind it. And then, of course, you have tailing, which is the same thing, except you're in the, you're, the enemy's in front and you're behind him. So these are the three things. When you're tailed, you also have the ability to, to make a maneuver. There are three types of maneuvers. There's... Uh, a little spit on there. There's a uh, slip, turn, and evade. We'll talk about those. Um, you do your hit check. You figure out if it's a severe hit. If it's a severe hit, that basically results in you essentially being shot down. You go to the fate box. We'll talk about that. Trivial hit means the fight goes on. And uh, resume and figure out, you know, kind of what the next step is. Do you have another cycle? Do the Germans bug out? Do you bug out? Whatever it may be. So, uh, or lo lose contact, I guess, essentially. So this um, this game has really nice components, as you would expect from a GMT game. So as far as the introduction goes, um, it talks about, you know, obviously, here's our sequence of play. 
Uh, here's a little box that tells you if you're new, you don't have to read the whole rule book to start playing. You read the introductory section and the dogfight section, which goes to page 16. So you read to this point, page 16, and as you can see, there's plenty of graphics. So the rule book is long, as I mentioned, 62 pages, but you have a lot of this in here. And so these are dogfight examples. Obviously, you know, it talks about how you lay everything out and so on and so forth. So rule book, very well laid out, lots of graphics. So here's a board or part of the board. Um, I'm not really going to get into this too much, but this is the main board with all kinds of things laid on laid out on it your rtb track which is basically your fuel um is at the t well it's not really at the top at the very top you have the fate boxes which is what happens when you get shot down then you have your fuel track and then we have interception map raid all that stuff comes later when you're start starting to learn the game the one i wanted to show was the squadron display so here's our squadron display so squadron display okay the game uses uh, wooden blocks. If you played the other games, um, you would be fam somewhat familiar with this. So you have, you know, your leader. And then, you know, th there's this is two-sided as well. So the other side has uh, for your finger four formations. So you can do finger four or you can do the regular Vs or Vic formation. So you have your leader and then you have... Uh, you know, basically his, his wingmen. So blue leader, blue two, blue three, pretty standard. So you have here sections and then flights. So you have squadron, which is the whole thing. Then flights, there's two flights, A and B. And then each flight is uh, two sections. So really straightforward. You know, you have section A, um, you know, A flight. B flight, and then you have the various colors. There's red, yellow, green, and blue. And then within those, you would have your sections, etc., etc. So real, really straightforward, well organized, so that when you're playing the full game, and you've got your whole squadron out, you have all your all four sections together, and you can uh, you can everything can be played pretty much on here or beside the board, depending on how you prefer to do it. We'll talk about how we do just a single dogfight. Now, you don't have to do this on this particular board, but the, the initial one here, we go to our situation manual, and we go to our, well, we have our dogfight scenarios, and it explains that scenarios one through five use only the dogfight cycle rules in the rule book, right? Pretty straightforward. So we have our hit cup, which is here. It's got all our tokens in it for when we take a hit. And then you roll against that to see if it's severe or trivial. Uh, we have decks of cards to help with um, determining. Basically, you don't roll for everything. There's a lot of card-driven play here, which is nice. And then you have the various components that you're going to need for this. So it's all really laid out well. And Here's our squadron display at the bottom. And it says that you can arrange your RAF fighters and VIC formations directly on your game table, but it's helpful when you need to randomly select an RAF fighter. What that means is, so if we had, you know, all three of these guys out here, there's numbers here, 1 to 4, 5 through 8, 9 to 12, you get a 12-sided die with the, well, two of them actually. Two 12-sided dice with the game. You roll, you look at the number, it's an 11, that would be blue 3 in this case. So that's what that is for. Um, and so we go to scenario number one, a flyby. So you get a little description here. August 1940, Flight Lieutenant Gordon Olive, A Flight 65 Squadron, maneuvered above a formation of JU-88s when Tracer indicated that I was being shot at and I turned to meet a head-on attack by a lone ME-109. We flew at each other, all guns going, and I ducked under him at the last moment. You are Gordon Olive facing your enemy alone at the start of this dogfight. See if you can bag your quarry. So then it tells you the dogfight takes place in the lost contact area. So you could just pick a spot on your table basically for that. Your Spitfire is an independent RAF fighter. You're engaged with a single 109 in a head-on attitude. Start the first round of dogfight with step A, combat. Most likely there will only be one round, a brief but possibly violent flyby. So it's head-on, right? 
Uh, obviously, these aircraft, I mean, they're not jets, so they're not flying, you know, really, really fast, but they're flying pretty fast. Um, so head on, it's a zip past each other. You know, guns blazing, both guys trying to hit the hit the other one. But uh, head on, a head on shot is a little bit more difficult <laughs> for, to be certain than uh, than than in a tailing position. So that's our situation. The scenario will end when the dog, when we run the dogfight cycle one round after another. When your fighter is no longer engaged, or if it enters a fate box due to a hit check, the scenario ends. Okay, so as as it mentioned, we don't really need to use one of the boards for this. We just have a single aircraft uh, off on its own. It's no longer with its vic. It's no longer in formation. Doesn't have its mates with him. He's just going to take on our our me one hundred and nine one on one mano e mano, so to speak. Now, the way the game works with the cards is you have various decks for the various attitudes. As that's part of the breakdown of the various decks. There's like six or eight different decks. But uh, as far as British aircraft that are in the game, you have your Hurricanes and you have your Spitfires. These I'm using a Spitfire. These are Spitfire. Uh, Attitude cards, I guess. So we have uh, head on and tailing. They share a card and then tailed. So obviously, tailed is when you're advantaged. Head on is kind of neutral, and tailing is when you're disadvantaged. So here we have our aircraft. Let me bring my my tower in here so we can roll, and you guys can see the rolls when necessary. So the the first thing you do, okay, we're head on. So we know we're going to draw from this deck right here. So we draw a card. And we find here, looking at rows and columns, real straightforward. At the top, you have your German aircraft. So this is a 109. That's a 110. ME 109, ME 110. Then you also have, uh, here's the tailing section. Here's the head-on section. So again, ME 109, ME 109, 110, 110. Pretty straightforward. Then, so we would be, a, this is a British fl uh, flight, British uh, section, three, three aircraft or solo so we're solo so we're in this column right here so now you get symbols and luckily enough for us the game and let me move my tower back out of here provides this uh icon results so we're in this area here so on our card we have the uh the symbol of an aircraft crossed out in a box and kind of a bullet symbol right so we find our symbols on here, and we have right here the Vanish. So it removes the Luftwaffe fighter marker, does not count as a hit. What that means is basically we're, again, we're head-on, right? So we just flew past each other, which you would expect in a head-on kind of thing. Then as far as the bullet, that means low ammo. So you attach a low ammo marker to the RAF fighter. If already low ammo, it goes to no ammo. And when no ammo happens, you ignore any damage results. Pretty straightforward. As it says in the rule book, this is going to be a really short one. And it is because essentially he whoop, vanishes. He gets a low ammo. So we stick a low ammo on him. And we're done. That was the whole encounter. Very, very straightforward. But that's how it works when you are doing... Um, you know, this kind of really simple dogfight. So now we'll set up for scenario number two. So here is scenario number two, tailed, 18th August, 1940. The ME-109s of ace pilot Helmut Vix 3 JG-2 are escorting a bombing raid over England. Vic sees a section of Spitfires coming at him head on. I pulled the stick full backwards, he recalled later, and positioned myself behind them. You are controlling red section of this Spitfire squadron. Vic's single ME 109 sets up tailing it. Maneuver to shake this 109 off your tail and, if possible, shoot him down. So we're going to use the squadron display. Okay, we're going to place red section of Spitfires on one of our section spaces and we'll have it tailed by a lone 109. If one of your fighters is knocked out of formation with a loose result, that's this L symbol. Slide it off the display. If no longer engaged with a Luftwaffe fighter marker, it goes home. Remove it from play. This is called Return to Base or RTB. Scenario ends. Run their dogfight cycle one round after another. When your fighters are no longer engaged or if they enter fate boxes due to a hit check, the scenario ends. Uh, I didn't mention this, but these numbers here, like this 11, that refers to the, the area of the rule book where that is mentioned. 
Okay, so I am zoomed in here really tight so that you guys can get a good view of this particular thing. So now we are going to be using this tail deck, right? So here's our here's our flight uh, red leader with red two, red three, right? We're tailed by Vic in his ME one hundred and nine. So when you do uh, when you are tailed, you get to do a uh, maneuver. So you can attempt to kind of break out and do something. Uh, to get, you know, to get in, to kind of flip the script, get an advantage on your opponent here. So let's talk about maneuvers real quick. So you have your three. So this is page 13 in your manual here. You have three maneuvers, evade, slip, and turn before resolving a tailed combat, which is what we're doing. But before, but after resolving all head-on combat. So there, you do them in order. You go head-on, then tailed, then tailing. So you kind of got to resolve those in, in a specific order. So when you're in a tailed attitude, you have the ability to evade and slip, and then at the bottom is turn, and we'll show that in a second. So evade, you draw two tailed dogfight cards instead of one, and then you select one card and apply its results, to discarding the other card. Um, and then it'll talk about what it, what happens after that. But basically, what you, the main point is when you when you decide to evade, you're going to draw two cards and take one of those results. Now slip is for section only, okay? So we are section, I, mean, I keep saying Vic, um, just getting my terminology confused here, so please forgive me for that. Slip, section only, this maneuver is only available to a section, not to an individual RAF fighter, unless you have the slick A skill that's more advanced, we'll get to that later. It is an attempt to slip one fighter behind pursuing German fighters. That seems to me to be an ideal solution for us if we want to get behind Vic and shoot him down. So there's no effect unless a slip icon appears as one of the combat results. So when you flip your card, if there's a slip icon on there, which looks like a kind of squiggly S, it's uh, this icon right here, or side S, kind of like a squiggly line, because you're basically modeling the, the move itself. If that, hears, if that appears, then you get to put your fighter behind the enemy. Right? You go off to the side, and he's no longer engaged with the whole section. He's now trying to bug out and get back to A, survive, and B, possibly, you know, again, use his own type of maneuver to get behind you and maybe, you know, do some, do some damage again. So that's, the, that's how that works. If it doesn't appear, then uh, you just apply the result on the card, which means you, you tried, you failed, and the Germans probably shot you up, and you're in trouble. And you have turn, which just says if the turn icon does not, well, a turn, obviously you're turning. If the turn icon does not appear as a result, the turn maneuver has no effect. So basically that's the thing. If you do a slip over turn and there's no, that symbol is not on the card you draw, then you're, you failed your maneuver and you just apply the result on the card. If it does work, then, um, well, you have here tight turn. If the tight turn result appears on the dogfight, Card shift the Luftwaffe fighter marker so it is now head on. Then apply results inside the tight turn icon, if any, but ignore those below the tight turn icon. So I'm actually going to do the slip anyway, and we'll talk about turns when I get to do maybe a turn down the road in one of the uh, maybe one of the future uh, scenarios that we play here. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to say that I'm going to apply the slip. Okay, I'm going to apply the slip, we're going to draw a tailed card, and we're going to look, and what we have here is, if it had been a 110, because here's the 110, it would have worked. We're up here in the, in the section area, so a turn would work, um, and a slip would have worked against a 110, but not against a 109, so we ignore the top part, the top part does not apply. And we go to the bottom, and we've got a bunch of symbols here. So now we have to apply those symbols. So again, if we come here and look at our icon sheet, so the first thing we've got is this starburst symbol, which basically indicates you've been shot up. So that is a hit, hit symbol. Draw a hit marker, attach it to the RAF fighter. So the first thing we have to do is, let me put my dice tower back in here, is we roll to find out what fighter we're talking about. And it's a nine, so nine is red two. So red two will have to draw a damage icon from the cup. We'll pull something out here, and 
We got a bad one, a nine. So a nine, we drop that on him right there. Actually, that's a six. It's upside down. It is a wing hit uh, six. So we'll put that there. And we'll roll our die. And if you roll high, same or higher, equal or higher, it's uh, trivial damage. And you can ignore it. If it's below it, then you basically get shot down, essentially. And you have to go to the fate box, and then you roll to determine what your fate is. You're going to throw that back in the bucket. No harm, no foul, essentially. And we move on. So we have next, we have the... This fuel symbol here, and then we have a G, and then we have an R. So what does all that mean? So the fuel symbol, uh, the fuel symbol right here, fuel, spend one fuel. So again, on the main board, you have the fuel track, the RTB track, where you basically mark that you lose, um, you mark as you use up fuel, because obviously, just as was the case with the Germans, these, these things ran on avgas, and they would need to go back to base and get refueled. They could not stay in the air forever. Makes sense. Then we have G, and G is uh, loose if it's a green pilot. Green pilot. So it's a G and then a second hit. So if it's a green pilot, you would get a second hit. So you'd have to do this. Green. See, if it's, hit, if it's a green pilot, you get a second hit. Obviously, pilots have... Experience levels, um, the green guys are the newbies. They're more likely to muck it up and end up getting their butts shot down. Then we have the R over the aircraft icon. That is a reduce icon. One German fighter flies away. So this is going to end our end our fight here. Vic says, you know what? I shot you up. I didn't get my kill, but I'm out of here. I've got other... Other things to do, other planes to shoot at. Maybe he needs to go back home, whatever it may be. So that would end our combat. And then in our situation manual, each of these campaigns, if we look at the outcome section here, outcomes. So if you have more damage results than fighters in the fate boxes, that's damage results against the Germans. We got an inconclusive because we had no damage results and no severe hits or damage equals the fighters in the fate boxes. So we have yet to damage any of the enemy fighters in our first two goes here, but we have lived to fight a day. We have not also, we have also not been shot down. So uh, any, any fight you walk away from is a good fight. So we will move on and do uh, scenario number three of five. Like as I mentioned, there are five of these in total. I'm going to go through all five. Okay, so scenario three, scenario three, on their tail. 13 August, 1940, Fighter Command's 43 Squadron from RAF Tangmir attacked ME-109s of 1st JG-2 as it was sweeping ahead of an incoming raid by Junkers, bombers. You lead your hurricanes of blue section into the dogfight when, stroke of luck, a swarm of 109s appears right in your sights. For our special instructions, it says you're flying hurricanes this time, which are more lethal to bombers, but a little more vulnerable to 109s. Blue section tails a 109 form and our lost contact. So uh, we'll talk about that lost contact here in a second. Run the dogfight cycle one round after another. When your fighters are no longer engaged or if they enter fate boxes due to a hit check, the scenario ends. You may find the form more durable then the lone Messerschmitt of previous scenarios, and also more lethal. That makes sense. You're talking about uh, multiple aircraft as opposed to only one. And then outcomes based on how many we shoot down, etc. So we're kind of progressing through our uh, various scenarios here. As far as dogfighting goes, obviously we had head-on. Then we had a situation where we were tailed. Now we have a situation where we are the tailing section and so we're going to deal with that and obviously part of dogfighting is things get moved around and adjusted because the planes are maneuvering planes split they get separated etc etc um so we're going to go through this and resolve our scenario okay so what does lost contact mean well here we go in our rule book on page four lost contact so it says basically lost contact means being at some distance from the german bomber formation 
and usually from the rest of the squadron. An RAF fighter or section that has lost contact is no longer in proximity of the bomber formation and is no longer on the interception map. It will have to use chase on page 37. I mentioned before section, I think I might have said section of the rule book or something. That's the page number. So page number 37, we'll talk about chase and during, well, it will have to use chase during the interception sequence to catch up or RTB, return to base. So basically, when we go lost contact, it just means, uh, in terms of our scenario here, it doesn't really mean much of anything, to be honest. But when we're playing, you know, as part of the campaign game and you're on the, on the interception map, then it means something because you're separated from the rest of your squadron. So that's why it talks about putting it off to the side and having its kind of own space just kind of on the table or whatever. I'll continue to use this because it's just simpler. We can see our formation really well. We've got our numbers here when we need to roll for an aircraft, although honestly, it's pretty easy to remember one to four, five to eight, and nine to 12. But for simplicity's sake, we'll just kind of, we'll kind of stick here with this. So the way this all works now, and there is a lost contact um, counter, so if I put this here, this just indicates that we have lost contact with the rest of our squadron. Our mates are off doing their own thing. We're on our own. We got to uh, deal with this swarm of 109s. So we are tailing, okay? So the first thing you do is this shares the head-on and tailing share a card. We flip it over. Now, we are obviously a section, and they are um, in the tailing. So... It doesn't matter whether it's a single aircraft or multiple, but we're going to look in the, M the 109 column and the section row. So we have S, okay, and then we have jammed. So that's actually kind of bad. So what S means is that the Germans split. So here's S, split. The Luftwaffe fighter marker splits into two markers, and now one tails your fighters. So our form here. We're going to take this guy away. So we're going to have two of them, one in front and one behind. Now the rest of the card, the jammed, would indicate that one of our hurricanes has a gun jam. So we would have to, again, roll to determine who that is. Let me pull my tower back in. So again, we will roll and we get a seven, which is going to be our middle guy, which is the leader. So our leader will have a gun jam. So our jammed guns here, jammed guns, attached to the RAF fighter. Each time it garners a damage result, roll a die, even apply the damage result, so no shot, basically. Odd, cancel the damage result and remove the jammed marker. So basically we're going to have him, you know, trying to cycle his weapon, get, the, get it cleared or whatever. But for now, he's going to get a jammed marker. Okay, so now... We would move on, and we have, an, we have a choice now, okay, because we are tailing one rota, and we are tailed by another rota. So the, the tailing um, enemy will have an opportunity to shoot at us unless we do a maneuver. But if we do a maneuver, then we lose this one. So we can't, we can't have our cake and eat it too, so to speak. We need to kind of decide what we're doing here. We can either... Take a shot knowing that first we're going to have to resolve this and we may take some damage. Or we do a maneuver, let this guy off the hook, they fly off, they're out, and see if we can get an advantage on this one. Uh, so it's kind, of a, it's kind of a dicey proposition here. So what we are going to do is we are going to take a shot at our enemy because, hey, it's war. The point of war is to defeat your enemy. So we're not going to let them off the hook. We have an advantage on this, this group here. So we are going to um, actually we have to do tailed first. I almost screwed that up. So you draw your tailed card to, to deal with this first. Flip it over. Okay, so we did not do any maneuvers. So no maneuvers. Hurricane. And it is a section. And we are fighting 109s. So... We would be taking a, we're going to take a damage and one of the 109s is going to leave. So this rota will become a, in a single aircraft. So that's a good, that's good news. That's bad news, basically. So what we do here is we, um, we have to roll to see who gets the hit. And we got a seven. So our poor leader is also now subject to 
a hit from our trailing 109s and we get an eight fuselage. So we're gonna stick that on there for the moment. We'll roll, if we roll an eight or higher, it's trivial, no damage. If we roll less than that, he's out of the fight and would go to the fate box. And then if we were in a campaign, we would determine what happens at that point. Rolled an 11, so that's good. So this damage does not count, does not matter. Back in the bucket, shake that up. All right, so that takes care of that. Now we know we're gonna reduce here. So our um, rota there is just going to become a single 109. We have a single 109 behind us, but now we get to resolve our tailing position on this rota here. So we draw another card. I always have them upside down when I first pull the card. Okay, so we are tailing 109. We are a uh, section. So we come over here, we get another split and a low ammo. So we still didn't do any damage, unfortunately. So... We get another split and a low ammo. So let's do the low ammo first before I split again. All right, so we rolled a, a seven. So our leader now, not only is he um, have a jam, but he's also low ammo. Okay, so he's got uh, a couple bad things going on there, <laughs> the poor guy. All right, and so now this one is going to split. And it's going to become an individual 109 that we are going to be tailing. And I need to check to see if we combine this back into a rota in that case, which would be seem to me to be the logical thing. So let me check on that. So here in our rule book on page 60, we have the split. Okay, for the Germans, German maneuver behind your fighter, split the tail Luftwaffe fighter marker into two smaller units. For example, a tailed form with two rotas, then place one of the Luftwaffe fighter markers so that it is tailing the RAF fighter or section if the result is combined with the damage. So um, it wasn't loan, it was a rota. So I, and it says at the bottom, the flexibility of the Schwarm and rota formation proved advantageous against the Vic. So I'm going to take that to mean that in this case, we're going to take this individual out and we're going to put a rota back there just to indicate that um, there are now two tailing uh, 109s and one that we are uh, ourselves uh, tailing. So we're tailed by two and we are tailing one. Again, we are faced with the uh, decision, do we try to maneuver or do we try to Attack, I'm, I'm saying let's stay aggressive. We're going to attack again. I'm not gonna do a maneuver. So I'm gonna pull another tailed card and we are going to look at it. And so tailed, we're a hurricane. Section again by 109s. We didn't do anything. So that means one of them is leaving. So we're gonna go back to a single. Actually, the whole thing leaves. The whole thing leaves, but we do take a hit. So we need to resolve our hit. So we're gonna roll again. Five. So again, again, it's the leader. Again, it's the leader. He is the. Uh, he is really taking it for the team here. So let's uh, let's pull another damage chit. Ooh, this one's rough. It's a ten. Ten to the fuselage. So let's drop that on there for the moment. We need a ten, eleven, or twelve here, and we get a nine. So just missed it. So he is out of the fight. He's out of the fight. We can remove all these markers and he's going to spin out and disappear from the fight. Hopefully he's able to, uh, you know, eject, parachute down. We're over home territory. So hopefully he just parachutes out, gets picked up and returns to the squadron and we hand him a new hurricane and he gets right, right back in the fight in a future mission. In the meantime, these guys having shot down our Leader will now peel off and go hunting elsewhere. And so now we can resolve our attack on our lone 109. Okay, so we are tailing a 109. A split, they can't split, and we get a low, another low ammo. We can't get a hit. I'm just, <laughs> I'm not pulling real good cards here. So let's roll again. Get an 11, so that's our... Uh, this is that's this guy right here 
Um, actually, it's odd and even when there's only two. So we're at odd, which is still this guy anyway. So he's going to get a low ammo. And we go on to the next round. We're still tailing, so we draw a tailing card again. So tailing, okay. So we are, obviously, we're still here. We're still a, a section, even though there's only two now. 109, so he's gone. And then we would get the G, the green um, loose, which a loose, uh, loose result is the RAF fighter becomes independent and has now lost contact. If the section is tailed, you may have the Luftwaffe marker, fight, uh, fighter marker trail or tail the, the RAF uh, fighter. So we don't have, we're not using the green and ace and all that stuff right now. So we're not going to worry about that, but we do. He's, he's gone. So we didn't shoot him down. So uh, this is actually going to be an, a loss for us. So he also takes off. He's gone. Um, and we would roll again for low ammo. We would get, if it's odd, which it is, this actually would become no ammo. But our uh, our fight is over. We did very, very poorly once again, although we did only lose one, one fighter. So I guess we could have done better and we could have done worse, but we did not. What we did not do is do well. So... Um, Fly a desk, more RAF fighters in fate boxes than German fighters killed. That is the truth. That is true. We lost one. He went to the fate box, our leader. We didn't shoot anybody down. They all kind of went their own way and left. So that is the end of scenario four. We'll go to scenario. I mean, that is the end of scenario three. I'm sorry. We will now go on to scenario four. All right. We are on to scenario four, RAF advantage. So this is going to introduce the advantage deck, which we have not yet seen. So the situation, 18 August, 1940, ME-110, something else we have not yet seen, of ZG-26 Horst Vessel Squadron pass over Harriet Chum, Kent when they're bounced by Hurricanes of 56 Punjab Squadron. You control yellow section, capitalize on your starting advantage, and win this dogfight. So our special instructions are use the squadron display, place yellow section hurricanes on one of the section spaces, shuffle the deck of RAF advantage cards and draw one. So kind of messed that up, but here is our squadron board. Let me remove that. That was from before. So here's our RAF advantage deck. I have already shuffled it. So what we do is it says the left side, when draw a card here, the left side tells you uh, how many 110s your section engages a rota or a swarm? If the text on the right applies, follow its instructions. Okay, uh, so it says on the left that is a uh, that is a swarm. We are tailing. Stay on them. If the German fighters are 110s, you may attack head on instead. Okay, so. The thing about the uh, the 110 is that the 110 was equipped with a rear single rear facing uh, 762 millimeter machine gun that the 109 did not possess. So it was a two seater, the 110, um, and it was uh, the Germans called it a Zerstora, a destroyer. So it kind of was a two seater, and it um, obviously it had a rear facing gun. So there were times when it might be to your advantage to attack them head on. Uh, some more special instructions here from the book say, heavy escort but no sun. For this training scenario, assume escort is heavy and there is no sun. These factors may apply to the event text. They actually don't. Um, and the scenario ends, we run the dogfight cycle one, after, one round after another when your fighters are no longer engaged or if they enter fate boxes due to a hit check, the scenario ends. All right. So we are trying to inflict damage on the uh, German fighters and we win a victory if we don't lose anything. We get nobody sent to the fate boxes and we inflict at least one damage to the Germans. So we know the Germans are a swarm and we know they are 110s and we know we are tailing based on our box, based on our card rather, uh, and our event. So I could choose to go head on. We're going to go tailing. So let me remove my advantage cards here. Let's bring back our 
head-on and tailing and tailed cards. So we're going to flip our head-on and tailing. And we are tailing 110s. We are a section. So we do, we finally here get a damage. That's what that uh, symbol there is. So that is damage. And then we have a low ammo, a hit to our to our fighter because again, the 110s rear facing machine gun. So we're gonna have two low ammos and we're gonna have a uh, damage or a shoot down rather of one of the Germans. So that's overall, that's pretty good. So let's check our, um, let's check our, uh, our icon sheet here so you can see the damage section. So here's the damage section. Uh, the main rules are on 55 and 56 in the manual. So, um, bomber doesn't really apply here, right? So, uh, Luftwaffe fighter marker, reduce it. Each damage result is counted as a kill. So from a swarm, we go to, um, we flip it to the smallish form. That's what I've been doing wrong. I've been using the wrong counters. <laughs> <laughs> the big counters. All right. So we go from the swarm to rota and then down to a single fighter eventually. So we reduce our swarm to the other side. It's now three instead of four. Um, so yeah, I was obviously using the wrong counters uh, in the previous scenario because I just was using this as a swarm, uh, as a rota rather, and it was not. So now we have to roll for our two um, low ammos. So number one gets a low ammo. So that would be yellow three. And our other low ammo goes to five, which is our leader. And then we also had a hit to our aircraft. So we have to roll for that. That will go to yellow two. So we're gonna draw our jam damage chit out of here. We get a cockpit nine. So that's kind of bad. So we hope for a 9, 10, 11, or 12. And we get an 8. So he is kaput. All right. So we're down to two, both of which have low ammo. And we go to our next resolve. We're still a uh, card, rather. We're still tailing. So we're still A section, still trailing the 110. And we get the same... Pretty much the same result. I did shuffle these, I promise you. Um, so we get uh, we get another reduction. So we're going to reduce this guy to a rota. We're going to have two more low ammos and another damage to our aircraft. So I swapped out my uh, swarm for a rota there. I'll roll for our low ammo nine. That's odd. So that will be. Um, that will be this guy here, who's now low ammo, uh, no ammo rather. And then we do another one, which is also odd. So you can't go below no ammo. And now we have to roll for our hit and we get a two, which is the even. So we're talking uh, yellow three. He draws a three wing. So this is a fairly easy check to pass, hopefully. And we get an 11, so yes. So he stays in the fight. Um, all right, so we have two, we have two German fighters left. Uh, we are obviously um, down to basically one fighter with ammunition. So we'll draw our card again. So we are again here. <laughs> we we again get a reduction for them so that's down three kills is pretty good we also take a hit and we get another damage uh low low ammo check so what we have to do is well we'll reduce him he's now a single 110 we will check for uh so 12 is even so that's this guy so that is going to be no ammo for him so this is pretty much the end of the fight, essentially. And then we'll check for our hit, which is also even. And so let's pull this out. And we get a six fuselage. 
And we rolled a two, so he's also been shot down. So as we as we now have no ammo, we have to ignore damage results. And so that means that um, basically the scenario is over. We would break off and, uh, you know, try to, we would just break off, I guess, essentially. So this, this scenario is, is over. Um, we have two, we had tough scrape, I guess, because we had three damage results. We had three damage results and we have two fighters in the fate boxes. So, uh, three to two tally in favor of the RAF there. Uh, we're going to end the scenario and move on to our final dogfight cycle learning scenario, which will be scenario number five. And scenario number five is Luftwaffe advantage. So we're going to flip the script here and we're going to have a situation where the Luftwaffe has the advantage. So this one is 18 August 1940, same day. The ME-110s of ZG-26 Horst Vessel Squadron are back again in the afternoon escorting a bombing raid to RAF North Weald as acting squadron leader Peter Townsend positions his 85 squadron Hurricanes to make a run at the bombers, the 110s attack. You are in control of Townsend's B-flight red and yellow section. So we're going to have two sections in this battle. So we're going to draw two Luftwaffe advantage cards. And um, apply each to one of the sections. The German fighters will be 110s, heavy escort in the sun. For this training scenario, assume escort's heavy, and it is in the sun or coming out of the sun. It means the same thing. All right, so scenario will end when we run the dogfight cycle one round after another. When your fighters are no longer engaged or if they enter fate boxes, the scenario ends. Keep in mind that once an RAF fighter breaks out of its section with a loose result, it cannot get back in. It returns to base as soon as it is no longer engaged to a Luftwaffe fighter marker. If this were a patrol, lost contact fighters could remain in play and reform as a section. And you see that on pages 39 and 45. All right, so let's set this up. We need red and yellow section hurricanes. Okay, so this is a little bit different of a look than what we've had before, but... I have my Luftwaffe advantage cards here, my head on and tailing here, and my tailed over here. Yellow section, red section, pretty obvious based on the colors. I have put a lost contact up here because if we have a, a plane drop out, we can put it up in here and to designate that it's lost contact with the rest of its section. Same thing over here for red. So pretty straightforward. We're going to draw two cards. One, two, and we'll flip them over. We'll apply this one to yellow. So it says, head on, hunt in the sun, clear or haze only. If escort station, it must be in the sun and a swarm. All right. So, uh, hunt in the sun, clear or haze only. So uh, it doesn't say anything about the um, the weather being clear or hazy. So we're just I'm just gonna elect to use this. Because I'm not, I'm a little bit unsure whether or not we should uh, do anything different there. So that's yellow. They are getting a 110, and it is um, it is head on. So it's coming at us here. So I just put this kind of upside down so that it's pointing at at us to indicate that. And our other card is also head on. This one says stay on them. If the German fighters are 110s, you may replace this card and ignore the Rota head-on with an RAF advantage card. Nice. That is a nice one. All right. So, um, if the German fighters are 110s, so we are going to replace this card and ignore the head-on with an RAF advantage card. Nice. I like that. So, we're going to draw an RAF advantage card from over here. And so, this one we have tailing. And fingers off, a green fighter immediately becomes low ammo. We don't have, we're not using that uh, pilot experience, so we're just going to put us put ourselves in a tailing position here. All right, so these other one tens will be 
like so. So we'll do like that. that. That way we're pretty clear on what's going on. So I can put my Luftwaffe Advantage cards off to the side. Move my head on and tailing over here and my tailed right, right here. That way I have some room behind them if I need to. All right, so you always resolve head on first. So it's head on, then tailed, then tailing, right? We have a head on situation right here. We'll draw a head on card. We're on this side, one tens, we're a section. So we're gonna get green, which won't apply because again, we're not using the uh, experience. We get a damage, a low ammo, and they disappear on us. So we do shoot one down and they, uh, they bug on us, they bug out. So that actually wasn't that bad. So we do have to check some stuff here though. First, uh, what you would do, and I didn't do this before, but I'll show you what you're supposed to do if you're playing in like the campaign. You would roll to determine, and we got a five, so that would be our leader. That's the, well, it's this guy over here. That would be the one who shot the German down, okay? Because you can, you can track that, build aces and all that good stuff, right? So he's going to disappear, but they did take one loss. So I'm going to keep that in my head rather than, you know, I'm not using the pilot roster or anything for these uh, kind of training scenarios. So we know that we got one damage and he took off. He, uh, he did a vanish on us, so he's out of there. Um, but we did get a kill. Now we check for, we would check for low, um, check for low ammo, which really doesn't matter because there's nobody else here, but we'll do it anyway. It's a four. So good old yellow three gets a low ammo marker. Just for, you know, bookkeeping sake, for going through all the steps, we'll use that. So, uh, so now we will pull our tailing for the other, for red squadron. Tailing one tens. Again, we are a section, so we're right here. So we're coming over. They are also gonna disappear on us. They're gonna vanish. The G we ignore because again, we're not using experience and we check for low ammo. So again, that really doesn't matter. I can roll for it. We'll roll for it real quick. We got an 11, that would be red two. So red two would get a low ammo. Low ammo marker for red two. They vanish on us. And that is the end of it. That was really quick, much quicker than the first one. So scenario five, our outcomes here. If we go to our trusty book, outcomes. So you scored one or more damage results on German fighters. None of your fighters were sent to fate boxes. That's exactly what happened. We had one damage result and none of our fighters went to the fate boxes. So that is chalked up my friends as a victory so that is going to do it for the dogfight cycle so we did all five scenarios um got through them all got a good look at how dogfighting works in this game uh you know obviously things can get a little bit more interesting you know if you have Things can break off into multiple fights. Each one of these sections can end up having side fights uh, once you lose contact, etc. Um, so, and then obviously once you add in the bombers and everything, things get to be a little bit more interesting and and deep. Like this is very, in my opinion, very straightforward. It's very simple. It's not dead simple, but it's really easy to pick this part up. So we're going to move on to the bomber, bomber cycle in the next video. And that obviously is a, is a big piece of this as well, because the whole point of this whole thing, this whole battle was to stop the bombings, right? Stop the bombings. In addition to obviously degrading the, the Luftwaffe's uh, fighter force, you, you also wanted to prevent the bombers from dropping bombs on England. So that's where we are. We're going to, I'm going to wrap this up now and we'll move on and do the bomber cycle next. So look forward to that in the next day or so. And so for now, I am going to say that will do it. My name is Joe. This has been Hexed Encountered. As always, please consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing. If you enjoy my videos, I would appreciate you supporting my channel. That would be outstanding. But until next time, as I always say at the end of every single video I do, 
Happy gaming!